Okay, just a question, uh, just uh, information. I'm going to use uh, the uh, um, for the recorder. The we can start the game. <laughs> we wait for a few seconds. <laughs> okay, I think that we can start. Start. In this slide, you can find a syllabus of the lesson. It's uh, more or less uh, what we are going to see. Uh, probably I'm going to change uh, something for the, the GPS uh, side because I know that uh, probably you want to touch uh, uh, GPS data, at least uh, GPS time series. So if, um, you are a, a small class, so we are going to try to do some exercise during the lesson. Uh, it uh, will, uh, will not be a homework because uh, uh, you have few times between one lesson to another lesson. So we try to, to find time during the lesson to do some exercise. So uh, in the f in, I think next week probably we need uh, your laptop or at, at least one laptop in the room to do some simple com uh, computation with uh, your, uh, I suppose, uh, MATLAB or Octave or what you use uh, usually to, to, to do computation. Okay, so uh, today we are going to see what is geodesy, what is the, the aim of the geodesy science and the most important uh, definition to, to have a, a common uh, words <laughs> that we can use and we can uh, um, understand each other. And uh, there is a small part about the gravity just to give you some definition. Uh, I know that people from uh, Earth, uh, uh, Solid Earth study already know what is a bouquet anomaly and so on, but for the other student I realize in the past years that uh, they don't have uh, this knowledge, basic knowledge from our other courses in uh, the diploma program. So I, th I think that uh, it's important to, to uh, spend some time uh, talking about gravity. Um, we are going to see that uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in this year there is a lot of uh, connection between geodesy, seismology and so, and so on. So it's better to have a, a wide uh, uh, knowledge about all uh, these uh, uh, sciences. Sorry. Sorry. This one. Okay. So uh, a, a big part of the, of the course will be on GPS. We started with a very basic knowledge on GPS. I think that uh, if you never see what is a GPS signal, it's important to start from the basic. Otherwise, uh, it's difficult to really understand uh, why we use uh, um, one observation, a phase observation, instead of another type of observation. It means why we have to to buy a very sophisticated GPS receiver instead of my mobile phone, for instance, that of course I have a GPS receiver inside. And uh, so I think that it's important to see the GPS of really for the basic. And um, just to have a, a complete idea of the system or, and of the problem in, of the, this type of measurements. And um, okay, so we, we spend a lot of time on GPS and um, we are going to speak about uh, okay, uh, the system, the error in the GPS observation, uh, problem with the mathematical model of the GPS observation and also on um, the GPS processing uh, methods. We are going. We don't have time in this course to to, to try to use a software for GPS data analysis. But uh, in this day, I uh, I'm talking with uh, Karim, and uh, if uh, we have time, 
after this course, after the exam, I can come back and have a tutorial on GPS uh, data processing. It depends on uh, your feeling. In the past, uh, there was uh, some former student that uh, um, now are uh, doing a PhD on geodesy and are using GPS uh, uh, data uh, pro software. So when uh, they have uh, the first uh, interview for, to get this position was important to uh, have uh, some basic knowledge also in data processing. So we see, we, we probably we are, we are going to have this uh, short tutorial just to touch uh, with your hand what is. Because GPS is uh, like a black box now, really. You can uh, obtain a result uh, more or less uh, just plus uh, a bottom. But it's important to understand all these steps because are quite important to take into account of, uh, um, every, every problem. So we need um, some time just to give, I need some time to give you uh, some theoretical uh, and basic information and, uh, and after to do tutorial to practice uh, with the data, real data. And at the end of the course, okay, GPS, oh, we, we will take time uh, on GPS time series analysis because it's important when uh, probably uh, also people that are not geodesists probably want to see to touch a GPS time series to, to compute a co-seismic displacement or, or analyze a co-seismic deformation and so on. I, I, I'm, you are going to, to have information about uh, this uh, geophysical uh, phenomena in other course. We are going to see how I can extract this information from the GPS time series. And this um, is important that uh, you see the GPS time series by the geodesy point of view, not uh, the geophysical point of view. Because at the beginning we you try to to put uh, to see what do you want to see. <laughs> but uh, we have to look at the GP uh, time series uh, in um, like a time series of data and uh, uh, I know that uh, you need to have some basic knowledge on uh, uh, statistical data analysis, statistic data analysis, least square, uh, probably you already know what is a uh, least square method or not. In the past some students don't know how to compute a linear regression in our data or a more complicated mo deterministic model. So we take some time to, to see how I can extract the information that I want, how I can estimate some unknown parameters like seismic deformation, uh, post-seismic deformation or periodic uh, signal from the GPS data. And uh, after, at the end of the course, uh, we are going to speak about uh, INSA. Uh, I forgot to, to ask if uh, this, uh, uh, usually there are some um, um, associate professors that come on during uh, the year at the uh, uh, ICTP and uh, there is a professor for China and usually he, he, he have lesson or tutorial or INSAR. So I don't know, I have to check uh, with Karim if uh, also this year so he can. So I understand uh, how deeply ha I have to go uh, in this subject. Okay, these are some uh, review, uh, some references in um, you, you find a lot of material on GPS, really a lot, and also a lot of lessons uh, in a website. Um, generally speaking, I think that the first uh, book uh, from CIBE is a very good uh, book from, uh, generally speaking, for satellite geodesy. And you have this book in the library. Uh, as a book, hard, hard copy, but also uh, as a, a digital copy. We, we bought this uh, two, three, uh, two, three years ago, so you can, uh, if you need, you can ask to the library. But also the other, and probably there are other books that you can use uh, 
uh, every year we have a new books on uh, especially on GPS and um, in fact some of these are quite updated um, okay I'm going to skip uh, you can have uh, the PDF file and I have uh, all the information after the lesson <coughs> Mm. Okay, during another. I forgot to put a, a lesson in a USB, but it's not a problem. We have time to to before. Okay. What is geodesy? Geodesy is a science. Is a science that study the figure and the gravity field of the Earth. What you mean figure of the Earth means size, shape and the orientation of the Earth. And in, especially in the last year, um, the geodesy studies the variation of this quantity, figure and gravity field, over time. And um, this uh, observation of this quantity is made uh, uh, using observation on the Earth's surface, on the topography of the Earth, or from the space. Okay, it's a very old science because uh, um, the the people need to know their position uh, from a long time to, uh, for navigation uh, application, for surveying. Do you know what is surveying? Uh, is uh, to do measure, to uh, um, to reproduce on a paper, on a map, uh, the, the building, the, the environment and so on and to create, uh, of course, a mapping. So it is a very old uh, science. Now, as I've already told, we, we, geodesy is very used to, to study the change in the shape of the Earth's surface, because now we are able also to, also to, um, to, the, uh, to, to, um, find uh, little changes in this quantity. Uh, you can imagine that uh, with, the, with the, for instance, a GPS, uh, you know, I, I think that you know what is uh, more or less a GPS, give us our position in the space. We are going to see better in detail how and uh, what is mean this uh, simple sentence. But, uh, okay, it's very easy to say where we are. In the past, to know our position, we need a lot of measurement, or surveying measurements. So it was uh, really difficult. And between one measure to another measure, it, it, it could uh, uh, take a long time. So it was uh, really difficult to, to, um, to check the movement of the hair surface. Now, with the space geodesy, this, uh, this is uh, easier. We can repeat uh, the measure in a short time with a high precision. So it's uh, easier to, to do measure uh, about high smelting, you know, is uh, one of the topics in this period where, where the people are studying climate change, uh, the effect of the climate change. And um, for instance, sea level rise, uh, land subsidence, uh, and so on. So I put uh, some two, uh, uh, two examples of uh, application. It, it, it's not solid earth application in a strict uh, way, but uh, are really related to the earth. Uh, if you see the heart uh, like a a body that we are going to study the change in the size and the figure. So uh, the techn genetic techniques are really important to study this quantity. And uh, these quantities are also related to the knowledge of the Earth inside. We have to know the crust density, for instance, to better model this, uh, 
this effect, uh, for instance, uh, the effect of uh, the glacial isostatic rebound, the effect due to the melting of the ice and the movement of the crust, uh, isostatic movement of the crust. And uh, to model this, we need to know, have information also for the, the crust, uh, the density of the crust. So uh, it's uh, really connected. Uh, this is the reason because I say, okay, now we have to, uh, in this period we are really specialized in one topic so because uh, the knowledge uh, go deeply in this topic. topic. But I think that uh, uh, the computation and um, all the technology simplify our words. For instance, now we can perform a, ba a big computation using bigger uh, computer, parallel programming, and so on. So now it's easy to do this part. So we can take time to, to, to see all different fields, different topics, uh, and try to connect this one. Um, but in this moment, we try to, to be too much uh, uh, focus on one topic. So this is a uh, is a uh, my feeling. But uh, we need to to connect uh, different observation. So uh, this is uh, an example. Of, you can see yes. Uh, this is uh, Greenland. Greenland is uh, one of the most uh, study area for ice melting, for global changing and so on, instead of, uh, uh, no, no, instead of, with uh, Antarctica, Greenland and Antarctica. And now this is uh, an, uh, an example of, of uh, the GPS information, give us information related to other fields, for instance, uh, in this plot they correlate the um, the anomaly in the melting, there was a, a year 2010, yes, where uh, there was a, a, a big melting of ice uh, in this region. And so with, uh, they correlate this uh, big number of day of uh, hot, of melting of ice with the uh, uplift uh, recorded by the GPS station. Of course, uh, you can see all the stations all around the coast. Uh, because uh, the other part of uh, Greenland is covered by ice, so it's not easy to put a GPS station, we are going to see this problem, uh, in the middle of the Greenland. And so, but this is uh, just an example. Uh, I take by website, uh, okay, you can find, it's a put uh, this, uh, uh, you can uh, obtain this information, uplift this award you, in a website and uh, you can find a lot of information about this example. So, geodesy, we, we, sp uh, we study gravity field and um, figure of the Earth. Uh, these two problems are, um, are um, viewed from different point of view. Gravity field, we know it needs a physical formulation. We, if you speak about the gravity field, you already study this in, uh, for instance, a basic physics course at the university, of course. We are going to, to in the next, we are going to, to put attention with the, the term gravity field, not the gravitational field. We are going to see the differences. But, uh, you know that uh, is a uh, means that we have a field, a physical field, I have to represent this one. And uh, when we speak about a figure, is a, a, geome a geometry description of something. In this case, of the Hertz. But uh, the t so in one case, we are going to to put attention on the physics of the problem. In the other one, to the problem related to the geometry, the reference surface, the reference system, and so on. But uh, these two different formulations are really correlated, are really um, closely related, because we know that the gravity field and the movement of the Earth, so it means it's a the physics of the Earth can shape the Earth. 
the figure of the Earth is due to its gravity field and its movement, of course, in the space. So we have two different approaches, but are really correlated. It's like a, a relativistic approach uh, by Einstein. He correlated the space and the geometry. Do you understand? So it's, uh, it's uh, interesting. And uh, in an uh, in implicit way, we have done this uh, from whole time in geodesy. We have to take into account the, the, the two aspects, but are really correlated. Also, when uh, we perform measurement, uh, we probably are going to measure some geometric uh, quantity, but are related to the gravity field. Field. Uh, usually we put the instrument along the vertical line and the vertical line is defined by the gravity field and we me measure along this vertical line so a ge geometric quantity but in a um, take into account in the physical uh, concept in the gravity field Okay, uh, the precise determination of the figure of the Earth and uh, its external gravitational field requires the solution of the geodetic boundary value problem. <coughs> this is to give you some information. So we perform is uh, we we have information on the Earth surface and from the exterior part of the Earth. Not in this. Uh, quantity we want to have information on the geometry of the figure of the hertz and the gravity field of the hertz so adding measures along the um, the boundary of the hertz okay this is uh, what i have seen boundary okay the gravity are on the surface of the hertz or in the stereo or in the space Gravity field, okay, this is a, <laughs> the basic. We, we know that what is a gravitational, gravitas, gravitational field and gravitational potential. Given a mass m, we, we can uh, uh, see that the effect, uh, the gravitational effect of this mass on a point P is given by this formula where we have the universal, universal constant of gravitation, the mass of, the, of this point, and the distance between the mass and the point. Okay. This field emits a potential, I know that you have already seen these uh, things, uh, called gravitational potential, and it's given by this formula. I use the term V, capital V. And the relationship with, between the potential and uh, the gravity field is given by this uh, relationship. It's the gradient of the, the force is the gradient of the potential. Okay. <coughs> by a point mass, we use a more uh, a mass uh, a sum of masses, a more extended masses, not a point mass. But uh, the formulation is more or less the same. Of course, we have to take into account for the all masses of this uh, body. And uh, we introduce the concept of density. Okay, but uh, we use an integral to have information all about all the masses. We sum the effect of each uh, um, small element of the masses. Of the mass. Okay, now the hertz uh, rotate, uh, rotates uh, around uh, an axis uh, that we call zeta, ax zeta axis. So, and all the measures that we are going to do are on a, a body that is rotating. So we have to take into account also for the centrifugal, centrifugal uh, field and the centrifugal potential. 
the force of uh, the centrifugal force. So if uh, is a, he uses a Cartesian, a geocentric Cartesian coordinate, uh, this uh, is given by this formula. And uh, okay, this is uh, the angular velocity of the Earth. And so we have all the gradient of this potential is uh, the centrifugal force. This is due because we are on a rotating body, of course. So what we call gravity field is, is given by gravitational field plus centrifugal field. So we, we call about gravity. Sometimes uh, we confuse the term. We speak uh, for instead of gravity, we use the term gravitational, but it's different. It depends on this term. The difference is in this term, the centrifugal field. And uh, when we perform measure on the Earth, we measure gravity field, not gravitational field. So we have the gravitation, uh, gravity potential, W, given by the gravitational potential plus the centrifugal field. So the gravity force is given by uh, the gradient of this potential. OK, this is about uh, the gravity. This is uh, for the gravity. Now we are, we are going to, s to see uh, what we know about uh, the figure. Uh, okay, what is uh, the surface of the Earth? The su surface of the Earth is the border which is the solid or fluid masses and the atmosphere. So it's included also the water, the oceans. And uh, this is give us the surface of the Earth. Um, Okay, it's difficult to represent uh, this uh, surface. We're going to see uh, after that uh, for the gravity. Oh, no, after. It, it's difficult to, um, to represent this surface uh, using uh, a formula because it's uh, really irregular, of course. So for the past, we, what we really do, we describe in uh, it uh, using Discrete, a, discrete, a discretization. We know the coordinate of some point on the Earth and this gives us the idea of the surface of the Earth. Um, what we call control point or reference point is depend on, it's not important. And uh, yes, uh, so we, we cannot describe this figure in a, in a mathematical way. We're going to see that this is a problem because uh, we need to do computation on the, about the Earth's surface. You have to see, for instance, for navigation, we have to know the distance between one point to another point. So uh, from the past, we start to use some, some approximation of the Earth's surface. The very simple approximation is a plane. But it's a true for very local application. In the past, also in geophysics, we, we use a lot of the plane approximation. We consider the Earth as a flat. But uh, okay, this, uh, now is, uh, we try to use a more complicated model, taking into account that the, the Earth is not flat. The first up order approximation of the whole Earth is uh, the sphere. We can consider the Earth like a sphere. This is very easy because we um, it's a jo more complicated geometry topology, but it is easier to use. We know a lot of uh, formula relationship between point uh, on a sphere. It's a geometry that we can deal with facility. We know that uh, with <laughs> the Earth can be approximated also with the ellipsoidal revolution, revolution around uh, a axis, the zeta axis, and um, this ellipsoid is flattened at the poles and have a bulge uh, at the equator along the equator line. 
e, the ellipsoidal uh, is uh, more complicated than the sphere to, to deal, but we know also for this uh, we have uh, all the formula to, to work in an uh, ellipsoidal approximation. So it's it easy to, um, it's uh, one of the uh, surfaces that can be used to approximate uh, the figure of the hertz. We can see, we can approximate the hertz uh, with the ellipsoidal of a revolution. Of a revolution, all right, but there is a, yes. It means that uh, just, we need just to know two axes. The minor and the maximum uh, major axis, and uh, we have a very simple formula to, to deal uh, with the ellipsoid. This is uh, the zeta axis centered in the center of the ellipsoid. And uh, now we A and B, the two axes, or one axis and another quantity uh, called flattening, we or eccentricity, we, have an, we know uh, everything about our ellipsoid, the geometry of our ellipsoid, with two parameters. Uh, in the past, uh, there are, uh, are given different definitions of ellipsoids, the changing these two parameters. Uh, these are really used for uh, mapping application. A lot of uh, mapping are based on um, <laughs> this type of, uh, uh, for instance, I for the uh, ellipsoid. And now we use uh, WGS84 ellipsoid. This is uh, the ellipsoid related to the GPS measurements. So. Um, it became very important, this, uh, this uh, definition. But it's a, like a, a, um, a convention. We decide that for us, the, the more appropriate ellipsoid to describe the figure of the Earth in one of these. Okay. The best is the most important for mapping application and so on. Uh, but, uh, Okay, we, so we can see that the ellipsoid can approximate the Earth figure in an easy way and uh, it's quite correct. But uh, just in the, in the 18, uh, the researcher finds that uh, um, if you consider the vertical with respect to ellipsoid, that we call uh, with, uh, um, okay, this, uh, yes, I was not sure. This uh, N, this is the normal to the ellipsoidal, ellipsoidal surface. This uh, is not uh, equal to the vertical, uh, uh, to the, um, along the line of force of the gravity field. So if we put the vertical using uh, a EV, for instance, this is uh, along a line. And uh, this line is different from uh, the direction of the vertical, the normal line of the ellipsoid. This difference is called deflection of the vertical. So it's important. It means that, uh, okay, we have solved the problem of the figure of the Earth, the geometry, but we have a problem with the gravity. There is no connection between, because uh, uh, the vertical, uh, the, um, the line of force is not uh, in the same direction of the normal line with respect to the ellipsoid. But uh, we, uh, we are always uh, along the vertical direction. We, we live in a, the gravity <coughs> field, so the, from the engineer point of view, we all is uh, built along the vertical line due to the gravity field, not to, to this uh, uh, geometric definition of the ellipsoid. So, 
So uh, the surface, uh, uh, the ellipsoid is an important surface to describe the figure of the Earth, but it's not sufficient when we want to speak about vertical problem, about uh, the height of, of the points on the Earth. Because uh, all the problems related to the height are related to the, uh, to the gravity field. We know that the Earth is covered by water, by ocean. And the, the, um, all this uh, water uh, try to be, no, try to be, is, is, uh, is put according to the um, equipotential surface of the gravity field, in a natural way, of course. So another important surface is the surface of the geoid. Geoid is uh, the equipotential surface of the gravity field. And this, uh, we are here, gravity field, is the surface that the ocean will take uh, if we don't consider uh, current or wind, tides, and so on. And this surface is extended through the continents. So is a, is a, the, the surface related to the gravity uh, to the equipotential surface of the gravity field. And um, okay, so it, it's a equipotential surface. So it means that uh, along the surface, the gra uh, the gravity potential is a constant uh, because it's an equipotential surface of course so we put uh, this uh, is was the gravity potential gravity potential is a constant it, now we are going to see which is the relationship between the geoid surface and the ellipsoid as the earth's surface so if we have a point p zero on the Earth's sur topographic surface, we can, uh, from this point, uh, draw the normal line to the ellipsoid on the normal line to the geoid. The normal line to the geoid surface is a line along the, f uh, the line of force of the gravity field. So it's a physical meaning in terms of gravity field. And you, you can see that uh, um, we have this, uh, this quantity, the height measure along the vertical to the geoid is called orthometric height, orthometric height, and we call with, in geodesy, we call this height with a capital H. The distance between the topographic surface to the, the ellipsoid measure along the force of line, uh, uh, no, the line of force, um, no, sorry, the di uh, sorry, the distance between the point of the earth surface to the ellipsoid measure along the vertical to the ellipsoid is called a small h, uh, ellipsoidal height. And the differences between these two quantities at first order. It's not uh, an equal, the symbol should be not uh, equal, but uh, it's an approximation, a first order, thank you, <laughs> first order approximation. I don't switch, uh, but uh, you, it's approximation. It's given by the ellipsoidal height is more or less so, uh, uh, is, uh, equal to the sum between the orthometric height and this quantity. And this quantity, M, is called geoid ondulation. Um, okay, so with this formula we connect a geometry, a, a geometric quantity given by fixing an ellipsoid but uh, we fix in the uh, try to approximate in, a best, in, a, in the best way the figure of the hertz, of course. But uh, it's a mathematical uh, definition. We have to put uh, these two axes. Uh, of course, we have some uh, 
uh, measure about the real dimension of the Earth, but we try to fit this ellipse, this, the Earth with this ellipse, the ellipsoid with respect to the Earth. But it's a geometric, a mathematical uh, definition. The capital H, the orthometric height, is given by a surface related to the gravity field, so to an equi equipotential um, surface of the gravity. So it's related to the physical dimension. And with this uh, relationship, we put all this definition together. Why I'm going to, to, to show you this formula? This formula is uh, very important because before the GPS, the knowledge of the, of the joy ondulation was a, a task for the geodesist, but it was not so important. Yes, we, we know that it was important to have them uh, because it really related to the gravity field of the Earth, so to improve the, our knowledge of the Earth was important. But from a practical point of view, it was not so important. With the GPS, we are going to see that it became very important because with the GPS, we are going to measure this quantity, a geometric quantity, not a quantity related to the gravity field. So this means that if I use a GPS to do measure, to, to track a road, a gallery, or something like this for engineer application, I have to correct this measure for the geoid ondulation. Otherwise, I have not information about the gravity field, so it means that I have not information about the, the water, for instance, uh, because I can uh, have a problem with the uh, uh, fluid problem uh, um, and so on. So it's a very important, uh, it became very important to know a uh, geoid with a geoid ondulation with a, pre a centimetric precision. We are going, why centimetric precision? Because GPS when uh, it's not used for geophysical application. Geophysical application we need a higher precision, millimetric, millimetric or sub millimetric precision. But for surveying application, often it's, it's sufficient to have a centimetric precision for the GPS. We reduce a lot of the observation time, uh, we can use instrument with a lower quality, so uh, less expensive and so on. So we have this with a centimetric precision. If we have joint ondulation with a centimetric precision, we can have information about the orthometric height with the same order of, of uh, magnitude. So well, it became very important to know the geoid ondulation and uh, it's also important for me from a theoretical point of view. It's, a, it's connected the uh, geometric definition of our uh, Earth with uh, the gravity field of the Earth. Uh, okay, this is uh, again what is the uh, automatic height. The automatic height of a point P0 is an arc length. This is uh, not a straight line. It's an arc length of the plumb line through P0, uh, between P0 and the geoid. Okay, of course this is a perpendicular normal to the geoid surface. Okay, uh, we have we have positive values outside ge the geoid and negative values inside the geoid. Okay, uh, H is a true coordinate. It means that uh, we have, uh, we, uh, it's not an uh, ambiguous definition because uh, plan, uh, the line of force, the plan line of the gravity field is just one for one point. Uh, where given a point, we have just one. Uh, mm, plumb line or vertical uh, line. So uh, is a not, uh, we cannot have different definition of orthometric eye in this uh, mean. Uh, the ellipsoidal eye 
uh, of a point P0 is the length of the normal line to the ellipsoid goes through the P0 point. Uh, okay, it's related to our definition of ellipsoid. If we change the parameters of the ellipsoid, for instance, the axis A and the eccentricity value, we have different values of uh, ellipsoidal height. Uh, okay, now we are going to introduce some quantity because when, uh, if you read uh, some uh, uh, paper on uh, geodesy, on gravity, and uh, you, f you find this, uh, this definition. We call anomalous or disturbing potential the differences between the potential W, you remember is the gravity potential, the true gravity potential, and the U is a potential due to and is a normal potential, is a potential uh, due to the ellipsoidal. Okay, we have an ellipsoidal with the given parameters. We can compute what is the gravi gravity potential of this ellipsoid. The differences between these two quantities is called anomalous or disturbing potential between the true potential and the mathematical definition due to an, a given ellipsoid. And T is an anomaly, it's a perturbation, it's not a big quantity. It's like uh, 10 minus 5 of U. F starting from this, we can add the gravity anomaly. So when we call uh, gravity anomaly in geodesy, we, are we use this quantity. We don't use uh, 9.8 <laughs> meter uh, over second square. We use uh, a different quantities given by the differences between the gravity observed and the normal gravity, what do we uh, obtain using a given ellipsoid. Okay. So we are going to see that the anomalous potential uh, is the core of the geodetic problem. To, to have information about the gravity potential of the Earth. We, to, to study this, we, we started from the anomalous potential, for these differences between the true potential, the actual pot gravity potential, and the potential due to the ellipsoid, the normal ellipsoid. This is a representation, it's not correct, the scale is just to have an idea. This is uh, the joint surface see, obtained by a gravity, a sat gravity satellite mission. We are going to see some gravity satellite mission like Chan, Grace, on Ghost in the last uh, 10 years, more or less, or even more. Uh, we have, uh, we started to have a dedicated uh, satellite gravity mission just to study the gravity field of the Earth. And from this study we obtain uh, this figure of the Earth. So you can see it's uh, like a sphere, but it's not a sphere, it's a strange uh, figure. And this is a figure of the normal. It's just to remember the difference, it's not a scale figure, just to remember the differences. One is irregular, it's a, gravity, it's a true gravity field, and the other one is a very um, smooth, regular due to the ellipsoid. Okay. To, uh, it's important uh, what happened usually. Usually we observe gravity anomaly. We observe gravity. Uh, Usually we observe, we have seen it before, we observe this field of the Hertz and we mm, reducing for the normal uh, gravity, we obtain the gravity anomaly. It's current. So from this observation, we, ha we want to we can know 
which is uh, the joint ondulation. And this ca can be done using, the, for instance, the Bonodesky boundary value problem, what, where uh, we have, uh, this is an harmonic function, so it's uh, equal to zero outside the, the Earth's uh, Earth surface. And we see that the gravity, our observation, are related to the anomalous uh, potential using this uh, equation. So this is our boundary value problem that we can solve to obtain, for instance, the joint ondulation. The joint ondulation is related to the anomalous potential by this simple, very simple expression. It's given by the uh, anomalous potential divided by uh, the normal gravity. Of course, this means in a given point. Uh, I forgot to put uh, the uh, joint ondulation at point P is given by the anomalous potential in point P, T, uh, in point P divided by the normal uh, <coughs> gravity at that point. Okay, and uh, the solution of this boundary value problem can be expressed in spherical harmonic sp uh, uh, expansion. <coughs> So, spherical harmonic are given by this uh, function, where we have uh, the Legendre function given by two parameters, order and uh, degree, um, degree and order. And uh, we have some uh, uh, classical um, representation. So, the, um, sorry, the spherical harmonic is given by the Legendre function multiplied by cosine or sin is depend of the parameter m, the order of that we are using. And this is, uh, we have different representation. It's like a, a discretization of uh, our field. And uh, the resolution of this discretization is depend on the maximum degree of L and M, of uh, degree and order of this uh, uh, exp uh, expansion. So, the anomalous potential could be expressed in terms of unknown coefficients uh, call that depend by the degree, by the order. This is how we, uh, uh, we, we write the anomalous potential in terms of spherical harmonic. And uh, um, what we have is that uh, the geodesy computes this quantity, this unknown coefficient, uh, is a study of a lot of research group on physical geodesy. Physical geodesy means a study of the, uh, uh, the gravity field of the herb, of the problem connected to the the physical, the gravity problem. And this coefficient are study and uh, compute as, and uh, give us uh, to compute the global geopotential model. So if you know these coefficients, we can know the anomalous potential. But if we know the anomalous potential, we can obtain the joint ondulation with this uh, simple formula, point by point. And we, have we are going to see that now we have different global geopotential model. Um, and, um, we have, for instance, EGM96, that is a whole geopotential model, where the maximum order, uh, the maximum degree in order uh, degree are uh, 360. And uh, now we are using EGM2008, where the maximum <laughs> expansion in terms of spheric harmonic are 2,119 degree. So it's a complete for order and, and degree. So if we know this coefficient, we have a model of the anomalous potential. It starts from the anomalous potential. We can have information on geoid ondulation. And, uh, there is a center, International Center for Global Hearts Model, ICGEHAM, that collects all these models. 
this uh, global gravity field model. So if you if you if you choose one of these model, you can find a lot of information. Okay, you have a, a information about the the year when this uh, model has been realized. We have uh, information about the maximum degree of the model. Information about data. You can have S mean. You can see S and. Uh, mean from a satellite mission and in the brackets we have GOES mean that they use the GOES mission is a gravity satellite mission from, from a, a European Space Agency and uh, you, you can also have data from GRACE that is another mission or G means that uh, you have ground gravity measure and A means that you use altimetric measure. These are different types of measures that we can use in, um, to, to, to determine the, um, the gravity field. You can, we can observe the gravity field put, put in our instrument, the gradiometer, on uh, the heart and performing measure. Or we can study the gravity field from the space, we are going to see at the end of the next lesson. Uh, studying the perturbation that we can record with respect to uh, a normal field. We have perturbation due to, due to the different density of the Earth inside uh, and this perturb our gravity field. And we can uh, analyze, it, for instance, the orbit of the satellites. We have information about this because we use theoretical uh, um, orbit. We can compute theoretical orbit, and at, uh, at the end we can com compare the the true position of the satellite with the theoretical position of the satellite. Satellite and the perturbation give us information on the gravity field of the Earth. And we can also use altimetric me measurement. Altimetry is a, a technique that uses satellite to have information of the water, of the ocean, about the distance between the satellite and uh, the sea level. It's complicated because the sea level is varying in, the, in time due to tied with current and so on. So uh, it's not a, we don't have uh, immediately the result, but uh, studying uh, this uh, distance, we can have information about the sea level. But uh, the sea level is uh, related to the gravity, equipotential gravity field, so uh, surface, sorry. So uh, give us information on the gravity field and so on. So you can uh, have uh, information about the references, the authors that uh, have uh, computed this uh, model, and you can download the in uh, in this file GFC. You can find all the uh, the spherical co uh, harmonic coefficient, the TLM coefficient. If you know this, you can uh, uh, compute using a uh, spherical model expansion the values of t in a point. And you can also use show the model or calculate the model with uh, a software. So there is different uh, computation, calculation of gravity field function on an ellipsoidal grid. You can uh, mm, choose the model, the functional, the functional are all this quantity. We can compute potential, gravitation, gravity anomaly, gravity disturbance, geoid, gravity anomaly. There is a lot of quantity, definition of gravity that is have uh, some slight differences. Uh, I'm not go, I, I prefer not describe all this quantity because uh, quite, um, it's not uh, your, uh, your task. But uh, you can compute what we call a gravity functional or functionals of the gravity field. Uh, uh, 
quantity related to the anomalous potential and to the gravity anomalies. And we can use a reference system, for instance, VGS84. VGS for instance, if you need a joid, you need a joid, is ondul joid ondulation is the distance between the joid surface and an ellipsoid. So you have to define which ellipsoid or give uh, information about uh, the coordinate system of the point where you want to compute joint ondulation. So for this reason you have to, to fix uh, a reference system. Um, okay, and so on. you can uh, have a grid selection, grid give, uh, this is a global uh, grid, and so on. So, no, this is a zoom uh, with respect to the previous uh, slide. Okay. I, uh, no, after. This is, uh, we, at, uh, at this point we have seen global model. So we have, uh, um, we, we, we can compute the, the joint ondulation all over the whole world. Uh, with this uh, model, but sometimes the precision of this model is not sufficient for a very important uh, engineer application. If you know, want to know uh, the orthometric height with the precision of some centimeter, we cannot use the geopotential model, uh, except for very, very flat part of the earth, very regular, but it's difficult. We have more or less one meter of differences but it depends on the model where you are and so on but uh, usually you have to improve the joint compute uh, using a local joint local joint means that the global joint uh, global joint potential model has been uh, ab um, improved in a local area using your data, your dense data, gravity data. And this service is provided by International Service for Joid. Uh, it's a, a service for the YAG, YAG uh, high, sorry, YAG is in Italian, <laughs> a, um, a -E -G. No. I -E -G. IAG, sorry, IAG, I'm going to write. IAG. And uh, it's an is a international association of geodesy. Okay, it's a global uh, associate, associate, association, like uh, for, uh, uh, is there one of the service of the UI, IUGG and so on. One of the G I think is mean is come from this, and uh, in this uh, is a repository. So they collect joint uh, from a lot, uh, other countries, different countries, and you can have joint on um, on the on public. So you can download this this joint. You can have a private joint. So you have to ask for use it, or you can have on demand. You can use, but before you need, uh, uh, you, you need to ask for him, but it is not a private, so they give you the joint before you, you sign, uh, for instance, uh, a, um, a paper, I don't remember. So you can find a lot of joint. So I want to, do, to ask you, because you come from different parts of the Hertz, to check um, two things. It's like a homework. Please, uh, uh, I invited you to do this. Uh, and uh, I recommend to do this. I ask you to, uh, to look at this, to the international. Probably they change uh, I'm not sure for this because sometimes they move. But if you write International Center for Global Health Model and use this name, you find is uh, the address is changed. I I forgot to to, to check this. And uh, you can uh, there are different uh, different. Uh, we can also check together. We, we, there are different. Uh, <coughs> 
model, you can uh, try to use one of these models. Put in the coordinate, fill this, uh, this uh, field and put in the coordinates, for instance, of the, your country. It's a grid and you, uh, if I remember, they give you a plot. Mm, yes? yes. Yes, they give you a plot. I try. I yeah. try. Okay. They give you a plot and you have information about the gravity field of your country. And after, you can check if in, the, in this repository there is a, 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 a geoid for the, your country, a local geoid. So it means that we can find more uh, higher frequencies, more detail. Uh, from the gravity field of the of the your country, I think it's uh, easy and uh, is important. Why is important? Of course, because it's geodesy and uh, this is my course, uh, is on geodesy. But also because now a lot of geophysics use grace data, and when you use grace data, you have coefficients, this type of information, spherical harmonic coefficient. I started from this because this is uh, more or less uh, the result of GRACE. You can, uh, there is, uh, because GRACE mission we are going to see has been um, uh, used to study variation in the gravity field. So often we want to see variation due to different condition in the, in the, um, in the water, for instance, by a season to another se season or due to ice melting and so on. But at the, at, at the base, there is a, the definition of this coefficient. Starting from, from this, we can compute different functionals, the team, ice rates, uh, and so on, uh, or gravity, or functional related to the gravity field. So I think that it could be interesting to see the differences uh, uh, and um, it's a very simple, it's uh, implemented to be, to be very easy. Okay, um, we, we have a few minutes before the break and we, I finished this part before starting the other one. We can, in uh, this few minutes, check the link. So, to be sure that, uh, in fact, I remember that it's changed. Okay, this is, uh, you can, uh, I C G E M G F Z Z. Uh, if you want, you can write uh, to the black. Uh, so I have to, switch and after we check, we check also the other link so this uh, service uh, okay in this uh, menu you can find static model for instance and uh, these are uh, all uh, the the models that now are uh, available <coughs> Now there are a lot of, uh, oh <laughs> you can see in the last year, it's full of, uh, uh, of uh, new, new model. If you look at the past, we don't have uh, so many models. It, it was uh, more slowly, <laughs> the improvement. And uh, now when uh, you have to use a geoid, you have to be careful. Uh, for instance, this is uh, for grace. And, uh, 
the maximum degree is 118 because uh, when you use uh, just satellite data you cannot uh, use uh, mm, have so much detail about the gravity field you stop the harmonic uh, um, the spheric harmonic expansion up to 180 220 and so on you cannot go up to uh, for instance 360 degree okay and to have more detail you need data from the ground in fact you can see that for instance this model uh, go to a very high uh, degree but they use a all they combine I, I don't know this model really but I, I can um, I can guess that they combine the information in uh, the old um, EGM 2008 model that it was based principal principally on um, ground data with uh, the information coming from the ghost mission coche or ghost mission the satellite mission of course also in the past we use satellite information because to to constrain the um, the low degree of the this uh, spheric harmonic expansion up to degree 70 for instance we use information from the grab from the satellite but these satellites are not put on the orbit for geodetic application but for other scientific application so it was a, a second product we analyzing the orbit tracking the satellite and analyzing the perturbation to the orbit we can have information the gravity field of the earth and this information um, are very important for the low degree of the field up to 70 degree after no and the problem was that we use different uh, satellite uh, and uh, different mission in different time so it was not so easy to combine all this information to have a um, um, homogeneous description of the gravity field for this uh, lower degree do you understand so the satellite mission uh, dedicate satellite gravity satellite mission uh, are important because they are study to have a, a, the good uh, informa good information about the gravity field not, it's not a secondary product of our research but they have studied to put the satellite in that orbit with s s uh, some characteristic to to have the best result in terms of knowledge of gravity field or variation of the gravity field like in the Grace case Okay, we can have a break. I think that we need a break.